alaikum dear viewers. Today we'll be beginning with our second session of Arabic. I'm sure that from our last session you can recall that we did the classifications of letters, we did um, dotted letters and undotted letters, then we moved on to separate and joint letters, then we further moved on to sun letters and moon letters, and then finally came how to write all the letters in jointings. So today we'll begin with vowels. So like all languages, Arabic also has its vowels. So today we're beginning with the subtopic under vowels, which we have short vowels. Right. So the short vowels we have in Arabic are, we have a fatha, we have a kasra, then we have a dhamma. Now, fatha in Arabic is fatha. In English, we call it accusative. So we have accusative. Then kasra, we have it's called genitive. Then finally, we have dhamma, which we call it nominative. Right, if you cannot remember these names, at least you can, as far as you know, it's fatha, kasra, and dhamma. So how do you pronounce these vowels when they appear on letters, right? So for example, I have the letter, let's start with alif, okay? So I have alif, alif fatha. So this is going to be pronounced as a, alif fatha, a. Then I will have, let's say, ba kisra. Ba, with the kisra down there. So I'm going to pronounce this as B. Then I will have a dhamma. So dhamma, let's say I take ta, for example. So I will have ta, I will have tu. So this is how you pronounce the vowels. So we have a fatha, a, ba kisra, b, and ta dhamma tu. So this is the accusative, the genitive, and the nominative. Now in Quran you will find, you won't only find these signs, you will find even long vowels. So we have short vowels and we also have long vowels. But then let's look at um, these words again. Okay. So let's say if I want to write the word, if I want to write this word, for example, zakara. So this is, all of them are accusative. This is, the whole word is in accusative format. This is accusative. So I'm going to pronounce it as the ka ra What if I have a word with more than one vowel? For example, la, ri, and ba. So you can see here, we have an accusative, we have another accusative, and then we have a genitive, kasra. Let's have another example. Maybe I want to write the word masjidu, okay? Meme. Right, so here I have an accusative, here I have a genitive, and here I have a nominative. So in a word, you can either have all accusative, or you can have accusative, and you can have um, genitive, or you can have all three, accusative, genitive, nominative, nominative. Or you can have all nominative, all accusative, all genitive, doesn't matter, as far as the pronunciation remains like this, like a, b, and tu. Or for example, any other letter like the, k, and ra. It will be pronounced as an a. Now we will move on to the next step. After short vowels, we'll go to long vowels.
So it's very important to differentiate between short vowels and long vowels, especially during recitation, because you could change the whole meaning of the sentence, right? So now we will go to long vowels. Right. So in long vowels, we will have a leaf. We will have wow, and we will have yeah. Okay. So these are long vowels. Now, for example, I don't want to get quite deep into this because we will be explaining further in the advanced level, but I'll just give you a few examples of wow and alif together, okay? So, example, I want to say katabu. You know, in the Quran, it says katabu or any other, like, verb, okay? So, I will have, for example, katabu. Right? So we notice that this here is, this is a long vowel. Wow and alif. They fall in the category of long vowels. So I will say katabu. I will not say katabu. Okay? So for example, if I have the word katabu. Katabu. So this is a short vowel. So this here is short vowel. It's short vowel and it's nominative. Right? And this, this is a long vowel. Katabu, and this is katabu, and this is katabu, okay? So we mostly find that these long vowels here, okay, um, apart from ya, these two vowels here, they are used in verbs. For example, like katabu. Katabu means they wrote, okay? They wrote. We will do verbs in our um, advanced classes. But for now, you can just look at the examples they wrote. So these are mostly used in verbs. At the end of the verbs, you will find this, alif and wow. Now let's come to ya. Okay? Ya can be used in possession. We will have a topic on possession discussed. I just want to drop an example here. So, for example, I want to say my book. Okay? My book. So, I have kaf, ta, ba. Then I have ya. Right? So this is going to be kata b, okay? Because this here is a long vowel. It's a long vowel. This is this was a short vowel, and this is also a long vowel, okay? So this is kata b. But let's say, for example, I don't have ya. I omit this ya, for example. Let me omit it, and then I have instead. Katabi, okay, without the ya, right? So this pronunciation and this pronunciation will be different because this is long vowel. So this will be katabi and this will be katabi. So this will be pronounced as katabi and this will be pronounced as katabi only, okay? So we are done here with long vowels, and uh, now we will move on. Right, now we will move on to tanween.
right? Now in words or nouns, you can have such tanween. First of all, what were the vowels? The short vowels we have here. What did we do in the short vowels? Fatha, kasra, and we had dhamma, right? Accusative, genitive, and nominative, right? Now we will have tanween. So what do I mean by tanween? Just double up everything, just like math. Just double up everything, OK? Right. So I will have the fatha will remain, the kasra, the thumma, OK? But then I will have fatha tain, kasra tain, and dhamma tain, right? Means two fathas, two kasras, to the mass. So that is my tanween. So that's how my tanween will look. Fathatain, kasratain, dhamatain. So for example, I want to write the word kitabun, which means book. So I'll have my tanween. Right? Or I can say salihan. Right. Now, one rule of the mean, remember yesterday we discussed about definite article. Al is definite article. So if I want to say the book, okay? So Al Al Kitabun Al Kitabu. Now here it is not allowed for me to put a tanween. I cannot say al kitabun. This is totally and completely wrong. I cannot put a tanween. Why can't I put a tanween? Because here there is al. If you go anywhere, any country in an Arab country, and if you tell them al kitabun, it doesn't make sense at all. Because whenever there is a definite article here. You can never put a tanween. So I will say instead, al kitabu. No tanween sign. This is correct. This is wrong. I can't put a tanween sign there. Or I can't say al al bintun the girl. I can't say this. This is wrong. It is al al bin al bin tu. This is correct. Right now we will move on. So we will move on to our next step. That is another sign that we usually come across. And that is the sukun. So we we'll move on to the sukun. So we can call it sukun. Or we can call it in English, or we can call it uh, jazm in Arabic. And in English, we call it jassif. Right. So now we look at the sukun. So, what is the symbol of sukun? 
the symbol is just just a circle on top so now this sukun it always comes after a consonant with a vowel okay so for example it comes in nouns in one place you will find it in nouns example qatlun see here this is the sukun that we are talking about so i will say qatlun what is qatlun a killing another example of noun sharbun Okay, I have sharbun. Here is my sukun. A drink. Okay. Now maybe I can have another word. Um, okay, now let's move on to verbs. Fine. Verbs. So you can also find them in verbs. Inshallah, we'll be learning verbs in our further classes. So verbs, I can have them in the middle of the verbs. Sukun in the middle. Example, I have katabti. Katabti here. Katabti means you, female, write. You, female, wrote, sorry. Right? So I can have katabti. And then I can also have um, laibti, for example. Or laibta. What does la'ibta mean? You, male, masculine, played. Okay? So I can have them in the middle of verbs. But I can also have them in the end of the verbs. Not only in the middle, this was in the middle. Now I can have them at the end. For example, Sukun in the end. Right. So I can have, for example, katabat. Katabat. Right. Sukun is at the end of the verb. Katabat means she wrote. So you find that Arabic is very specific. Okay. Not like, you know, not like the other languages because it's very specific. It's you, female, wrote. It's different for male. It's different for female. You, male, wrote. Uh, you, male, played, sorry. It's different, okay? And, and then again, she wrote, okay? So we'll be looking at these verbs, inshallah. So we have katabat at the end. Then we have another verb example. Jalasat. Okay, jalasat means she sat. So where do we find sukun? We find them in nouns like katlun, sharbun. Where else do we find sukun? We find them in verbs in the middle like katabti and laibta. Where else do we find sukun? We find sukun in verbs at the end like katabat and jalasat. Now we will move on to another sign that we usually find in the Quran because there are many signs that we find in the Quran and if we do not know how to pronounce them then we cannot recite and nor can we converse with people right so another sign I will be talking about today is the Tashdeed remember yesterday we did a little bit about the Tashdeed which this is the symbol Right, so that is the 
tashdeed. So, this tashdeed, I had given an example yesterday. Let me just uh, uh, refresh your memories. So, for example, I had said a shamsu. This is the tashdeed sign. I said ash shamsu. Why? <clears throat> because sheen here is a sun letter. Therefore, if it comes after lam, lam remains silent. So, because lam remains silent, sheen will be pronounced, lam will be dropped out, sheen will be pronounced with a tashdeed sign ash shamsu. So, I will say, write it as ash shamsu. I can't write asham sun. I said that is wrong. Why is it wrong? Because we have a definite article. Whenever we have al, we can't have tanween. So if you have al plus any tanween, okay, be it fathatain, kasratain, dhammatain. This equation is completely wrong. You can't have something like al with a with a fathatain, with a kasratain, with a dhammatain. It's not possible. It's not allowed. Okay. Right. So going back to tashdeed, ashamsu, the sun. Now, tashdeed was actually derived for verbs. So, for example, I have a verb. I have a verb farara, okay? Farara. Farara. Farara means he fled. Okay? So farara will change into the Arabians because they said, you know, farara, it, it doesn't sound nice, right? So they have made a rule here that this letter ra will be dropped out. You drop out the letter ra, cancel it, and then you add a tashdeed sign. So it will become farra. Right? It's just like maths. You drop one out, bring another one in. So ra goes out. Tashdeed comes in. So there are two ras, one and two. So one ra minus one. Drop this ra out and introduce a tashdeed sign on the previous ra. So it, instead of farara, it will be farra. He fled. Same meaning. The meaning does not change. So farara becomes farra. Let's say another word. Hajaja, for example, ha, jim, and jim. Hajaja. Hajaja means he performed hajj. He performed He performed hajj. Okay? So now again, same ruling applies. Here I have ra and here I have ra. Here I have jim, here I have jim. What am I going to do? This jim goes out. I'm going to drop down this jim, goes out, and this here I'm going to introduce a tashdeed sign, just the way I did here. So it is going to become hajja. Very good. going to become hajja. So farara becomes farra. Hajaja becomes hajja. Now you might ask me, does this only take place in verbs like, you know, dropping out, adding, dropping out? This happens only in verbs that can be derived from nouns, okay? Only in verbs that can be derived from nouns. It can also happen in nouns, but in a different manner. It, it has more rulings to it. 
and it's more of an advanced level since for you beginners it's going to be too much to introduce the nouns. So just know that only the verbs that are derived, only verbs that are derived from nouns, only these verbs, okay, they can be used here. Only these verbs, they can change like this. Only these verbs, you can drop down one letter, introduce a shadda, change the word, meaning remains the same. Afahimtum al an? Very good. Okay, so this was the tashdeed sign. Now, after the tashdeed sign, now we will move on to other signs uh, in the Quran. So, you need to remember all these signs, just like you remember the road signs. While walking or while driving, you remember all the road signs, right? So when you recite the Quran, you need to remember all these signs. So we will go to the next step, um, which will be Madda. Okay. Now Madda, okay, there are three types of Madda in the Quran, you will notice. First, you will come across something like this. Let me put a leaf. Right. So, you will come across something like this line up here. Right? In the Quran. Then, you will come across another sign like this. Right? Then, you will come across another mother like that. Right? So, when reciting, the Quran. This is only when you are reciting the Quran, not when you are conversing with people, please, okay? So, only when reciting the Quran, this you will prolong two times. You will prolong this two times. This you will prolong it, lengthen it four times. And this one, six times. Right. So let me give you an example of each. Um, let's say I want to say amana. Okay. Remember in the Quran we say, uh, chapter number three we say amana rasulu. The first, the first verse of tilka rasulu, chapter three in the Quran. Um, so we say amana rasulu. So amana. Just, just an example. So we have. Amana. Okay, so the difference if we, if I have something like this is different. You see, this is different. This is different. Okay, this is short vowel. This is madda. How madda of prolonging two times. Madda of prolonging two times. So this one I will say it is Amana 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 right and this one I will say it is Amana. So you notice the difference between Amana and Amana right now let's look at another, so if I want to say, let's say, um, mashallah, okay? So ma, masha, masha Allah. So here it, this is, this is six times. This is madda, which is six times. Madda, which is six times. So I'll prolong this only while reciting Quran. I'll prolong this six times. Of course, if you tell someone, you know, you're looking very nice, you won't say, Masha Allah, you are looking very nice. No. Okay? So this only while reciting, okay? So you in only while reciting in the Quran, you will say, 
Masha Allah six times, right? Um, let's look at this example four times. Amana, maybe I can also have uh, just an example. Amana four times. All right? Right. So this is Madda how many times? Four times. So we have Madda four times. So I would say Amana. Okay, so it's four times a mana here we'll have six times masha allah count six times and that's how you will recite the quran so we have already finished the maddas now we will go to conversation just giving you you know like two sentences conversation Arabic conversation. So I'll just give you two sentences. So if you meet someone, assalamu alaikum, and you want to ask your teacher or you want to ask your classmate or whoever, your mom, your dad, how are you? So how will you say how are you in Arabic? You will say kaifa kaifa. Kaifa means how. Kaifa means how. How are you? Kaifa haluk. Kaifa haluka. Now, kaifa haluka only if it is a male. So, this is only for masculine. Right? But if I want to say for feminine, I will say kaifa haluki. This is for feminine. Right? So, kaifa haluka, if it's your male teacher or your father, whoever. Or kaifa haluki to your sister. Okay? Then we move on. Now, how will you reply? So, kaifa haluka, kaifa haluki, meaning? How are you, male or female? So, I will reply, I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Ana, I will say Ana, Ana bi khairi, Ana bi khairi, walhamdulillah. So I will say, Ana bi khairi, walhamdulillah, means I am, I am fine, praise be to Allah. Right, so this marks the end of our today's session. So please remember me in your duas and inshallah we shall continue with our next session tomorrow. وآخر الدعوانا والحمد لله رب العالمين